The history of the tank begins with World War I, when armored all-terrain fighting vehicles were introduced as a response to the problems of trench warfare, ushering in a new era of mechanized warfare. The tank was originally designed as a special weapon to solve an unusual tactical situation, the stalemate of the trenches on the Western Front. It was a weapon designed for one simple task, crossing the killing zone between trench lines and breaking into enemy defenses. The armored tank was intended to be able to protect against bullets and shell splinters and pass through barbed wire in a way infantry units could not hope to, thus allowing the stalemate to be broken. Leonardo da Vinci is often credited with the invention of a war machine that resembled a tank. In 1903, a French artillery captain named Léon Levavasseur proposed the Levavasseur project, a cannon autopropulsor or self-propelled cannon, moved by a caterpillar system and fully armored for protection. Powered by a 80-horsepower petrol engine, H.G. Wells, in his short story The Land Ironclads, published in the Strand magazine in December 1903, had described the use of large, armed, armored cross-country vehicles equipped with pedrail wheels to break through a system of fortified trenches, disrupting the defense and clearing the way for an infantry advance. In 1911, the Austrian engineering officer Gunther Bursten submitted a proposal for a fighting vehicle that had a gun in a rotating turret, known as the Motorgeschütz. In 1912, the Australian civil engineer Lancelot de Mole's proposal included a scale model of a functional fully tracked vehicle. But both were rejected by the governments of their times. The French Colonel Jean-Baptiste Eugène Eschen articulated the vision of a cross-country armored vehicle on 24 August 1914. Some privately owned Holt tractors were used by the French army soon after the start of World War I to pull heavy artillery pieces in difficult terrain. It was the sight of them in use by the British that later inspired Eschen to have plans drawn up for an armored body on Caterpillar tracks. From 1914 to 1915, an early experiment was made with the Boiralt machine, with the objective of flattening barbed wire defenses and riding over gaps in a battlefield. This device proved too fragile and slow, as well as incapable of changing direction easily, and was abandoned. In France, on 1 December 1914, Paul Frott, an engineer, proposed to the French ministry a design for a land ship with armor and armament based on the motorization of a compactor with heavy wheels or rollers. The Frott Lafley was tested on 18 March 1915 and effectively destroyed barbed wire lines, but was deemed lacking in mobility. The Aubrey at Gabbett Fortress, mounted on the cross-country chassis of agricultural tractors built in 1915, powered by electricity and armed with a Navy cannon of 37 mm, but it too proved impractical. The first complete chassis with armor was demonstrated at Swan on 9 December 1915 to the French army, with the participation of Colonel Eschen. On 12 December, unaware of the Schneider experiments, Eschen presented to the High Command a plan to form an armored force equipped with tracked vehicles. In a letter dated 31 January 1916, Commander-in-Chief Joffer ordered the production of 400 tanks of the type designed by Brillier and Eschen, although the actual production order of 400 Schneider CA-1 was made a bit later on 25 February 1916. Soon after, on 8 April 1916, another order for 400 St. Chamon tanks was also placed. In 1914, the British War Office ordered a Holt tractor and put it through trials at Aldershot. The 75-horsepower Holt managed a walking pace of 4 miles per hour. Towing a load, it could manage 2 miles per hour. Most importantly, Holt tractors were readily available in quantity. The War Office was suitably impressed and chose it as a gun tractor. In May 1915, the British War Office made new tests on a trench crossing machine, the Triton Trench Crosser. The machine was equipped with large tractor wheels, 2.4 meters in diameter, and carried girders on an endless chain which were lowered above a trench so that the back wheels could roll over it. The machine proved much too cumbersome and was abandoned. When Winston Churchill, first Lord of the Admiralty, learned of the armored tractor idea, he reignited investigation of the idea of using the Holt tractor. 
In March, Churchill ordered the building of 18 experimental landships, 12 using diplock pedrails. Construction, however, failed to move forward, as the wheels seemed impractical and the system was deemed too large, too complicated, and underpowered. Instead of choosing to use the Holt tractor, the British government chose to involve a British agricultural machinery firm, Foster and Sons, whose managing director and designer was Sir William Tritton. Another experiment was conducted development continued with new, re-engineered tracks designed by an American Killen straight track tractor. A wire cutting mechanism was successfully fitted, but the trench crossing capability of the vehicle proved insufficient. A Delaunay Belleville armored car body was fitted, making the Killen straight armored tractor the first armored tracked vehicle, but the project was abandoned as it turned out to be unable to fulfill all terrain warfare requirements. Development continued with new, re-engineered tracks designed by William Tritton, and the machine, now renamed Little Willie, was completed in December 1915. The name Tank was introduced in December 1915 as a security measure and has been adopted in many languages. William Tritton stated that when the prototypes were under construction from August 1915, they were deliberately falsely described in order to conceal their true purpose. In the workshop, the paperwork described them as water carriers, supposedly for use on the Mesopotamian front. In conversation, the workers referred to them as water tanks or simply tanks. In October, the Landships Committee decided, for security purposes, to change its own name to something less derapective. One of the members, Ernest Swinton, suggested tank and the committee agreed. The name tank was used in official documents and common parlance from then on, and the Landships Committee was renamed the Tank Supply Committee. In Russia, Vasily Mendeleev, an engineer in a shipyard, worked privately on a design of a super-heavy tank from 1911 to 1915. It was a heavily armored 170-ton tracked vehicle armed with one 120mm naval gun. The design envisioned many innovations that became standard features of a modern battle tank. However, the cost would have been almost as much as that of a submarine, and it was never built. The Vestikod was a small cross-country vehicle designed by aero engineer Alexander Porokovskikov that ran on a single wide rubber track propelled by a 10-horsepower engine. Two small wheels either side were provided for steering, but while the vehicles could cross ground well its steering was ineffectual. In post-revolution Russia, the Vestikod was portrayed in propaganda as the first tank. The Tsar tank, also known as the Lebedenko tank after its designer, was a tricycle design vehicle on 9 meters high front wheels. It was expected that such large wheels would be able to cross any obstacle, but because of a flawed design most of the weight was forced through the smaller rear wheel, which became stuck when tested in 1915. The A7V was the only German tank of World War I that saw actual combat. A prototype was built in early 1917 for trials, with production of the vehicles beginning in October of the same year. They were used on about six occasions from March 1918. Only 20 were produced. Germany also had several other projects on paper, as well as other prototype tanks in development. Operational use of tanks will be discussed in the next video. So see you there.